Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walat. Here I am again with more authors based on LGBT literature, very famous writers. Today in this video, I have included only one writer because there is so much to talk about him. Who is he? Evelyn Waugh, or many people call him Evelyn Waugh. No, that's not Waugh. It is Evelyn Waugh. He was an English novelist, a biographer, a travel writer, the most brilliant satirical novelist of his day. He was a prolific journalist. He was a book review reviewer and a prose stylist. Tongue twister again, a re reviewer. <laughs> that is Evelyn or Evelyn Waugh. Lived from 1903 to 1966. Look at Evelyn on the screen. Uh, along with a lot of work that he has produced, he's definitely been criticized because he believed in white supremacy. He believed in race and caste. And also he had anti-Semitic views. You know what is Semitism, anti-Semitism. So he was against Jews. So yes, his works have been criticized on that note. But then being a homosexual writer, his works have their own speciality. His works have so much satire in them, so much humor in them. Yes? Come, let's listen. Few works with which he started with his writing. These are not important, but then because he wrote so much that as a child, he started writing stories. So first story of Evelyn was The Curse of the Horse Race. When in school, he established a magazine by himself. He became the editor of that magazine also. The name of the magazine was The Cynic School Magazine. Not just that, he published an essay which became his first published article in the year 1917. It was called In Defense of Cubism. In Defense of Cubism. And he was a student at Oxford. And at Oxford, the two Oxford magazines which were published called as Cherwell and Isis, Cherwell and Isis, in these Oxford magazines, Evelyn Waugh used to write reports on union debates. So his writing span actually started very early in his career. The Hippocrates Club, with which Evelyn got associated at Oxford, the Hippocrates Club, which gave him that habit of excessive drinking and yes, wasted his life to a certain extent. The Hippocrates Club, which gave the first homosexual encounter to Evelyn. You should know about the Hippocrates Club. An avant guard or a student club at Oxford University, of which War served as the secretary. This Hippocrates Club was founded in the year 1921 by J.D.K. Lloyd. Initially, the Hippocrates Club was like an artist's club, which uh, was a place to discuss philosophy, art, poetry. But soon everything changed and Hippocrates Club became a place just to drink and party, drink and party. What is the motto of Hi Hippocrates Club? This word is taken from Greek, basically from an Olympian ode by Pindar, the Pindaric odes. It means water is best. Now, what does that mean? What does that signify? Water is best. The members of this club called themselves hypocrites because beer, wine, spirits, other kinds of alcohol were their preferred drinks, not water. What was said for the hypocrites club? You should know it. Quote, it was at the university that I took to drink discovering in a crude way the contrasting pleasures of intoxication and discrimination. Of the two, for many years, I preferred the former, which means I preferred the intoxication, the excessive drinking that he got into. Also, as I told you, was first of several homosexual relationships flourished at this club. Easy, can we move on? Famous works by Evelyn Waugh, Decline and Fall of 1928. Does this uh, title ring a bell? Decline and Fall, Decline and Fall? It is actually connected with that. First, listen, this was Waugh's first published novel. The title was inspired by two works. First, Edward Gibbons, The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. 
And the second work which inspired war was German philosopher Oswald Sprengler's The Decline of the West. War was reading both these books. He had read both these books, you know, before uh, starting with Decline and Fall of 1928. Genre of Decline and Fall is it's a comedy and a social satire theme. It discusses war's experiences in school, college, and as a teacher. You know, war had to change school once because his elder brother was thrown out of the school because of homosexual encounters after which the school itself was shut. So War had to change his school. Then he came to Oxford. Then he became a teacher. All these experiences firsthand are recorded in Decline and Fall of 1928. And in this work, War has used black humor in lampooning the British society and its customs of 1920s. After 1928's Decline and Fall, the next novel by Evelyn Waugh is Wild Bodies. Published in 1930, Wild Bodies is again a satire. It satirizes whom? Bright young things or bright young people. Who are these bright young people? Know this. A group of young English bohemian aristocrats and socialites in the 1920s. Basically, after World War I ended, these young aristocrats, upper class people of London, they lived or started living a very lavish life. They threw flamboyant parties, fancy dress parties. They undertook treasure hunts, exotic, erotic treasure hunts at night. Not just that, these bright young things and bright young people drank heavily. They took overdoses of drugs. And can you imagine all, all these activities of bright young things were enthusiastically covered by journalists, Charles Graves and Tom Drig Driberg. Charles Graves and Tom Driberg. So Wild Bodies basically is a satire on bright young things by Evelyn Waugh. Published in 1930. And you should know Wild Bodies was adapted into a 2003 film with the name of Bright Young Things. Here I have to tell you something. Although homosexual, Evelyn Waugh married, married women. He married twice. His first wife was called Evelyn Gardner. Yes, Evelyn Waugh weds Evelyn Gardiner. They married in 1928 and she was in fact a bright young thing a member of that bright young thing, or she was the bright young person. Although their marriage did not last long, they were called he Evelyn and she Evelyn. You know, their friends called them like this, he Evelyn, she Evelyn. But yes, their marriage did not last long. Done with Wild Bodies of 1930? Want to know more works by Evelyn Waugh? You should know his unpublished novel. Unpublished novel by Waugh is The Temple at Thatch. The Temple at Thatch. Then came a handful of dust of 1934. Important. And his most famous work is Bride's Head Revisited, The Sacred and Profane Memories of Captain Charles Ryder of the year 1945. Just call it Bride's Head Revisited. This was adapted into a television serial in 1981. This Bride's Head Revisited talks about religious crisis as well as recovery of faith among the members of a Roman Catholic family. Its theme is upper class strife, religion, all of this. Bride's Head Revisited, 1945 by Evelyn Waugh. Then, you know, when he was a part of the Hypocrites Club, he tried to make a film along with them. The name of this film was The Scarlet Woman. The Scarlet Woman. Okay, remember the novel, The Scarlet Letter? Yes. Now, what is Sword of Honor of 1965? Sword of Honor is basically a trilogy, a war trilogy covering the Second World War. It was published in 1965. So Second World War ke time, Evelyn Waugh was a very, very strong member of the British Army. Basically, he first served in the Royal Marines. Then he came to the Royal Horse Guards. He traveled widely because of the war. He was posted at different places. There was a time in the war. They all were disillusioned. Same went with war, no matter how hard he tried. But then he could not focus or he could not uh, justify 
he was a white. He was a very, very proud white. But then, yes, war had toll on Evelyn also. There was a time when uh, he got a fracture and then he took a leave from the war. He went home. He worked on more novels. Take. So Swords of Honor is a war trilogy by Evelyn Waugh, which discusses Waugh's experiences during World War II. Now, since it's a trilogy, what are the three novels that are a part of Swords of Honor? You want to know their names? First, Men at Arms of 1952. Second, Officers and Gentlemen of 1955. Third, Unconditional Surrender of 1961. And this book, Unconditional Surrender, was titled The End of the Battle in the US and Canada. Okay, so you understood? Sword of Honor 1965 War Trilogy by Evelyn Waugh consists of men at arms, officers and gentlemen, and unconditional surrender of 1952, 1955, 1961. Done? Let's move on. More works by Evelyn Waugh. The Balance of 1926 is a short story written in modernist style. Written in modernist style. And this the Balance of 1926, became his first commercially published fiction. It was published in the anthology Georgian Stories by Chapman and Hall. Biographer. I told you at the start, Evelyn Waugh was a biographer. So he wrote three very important biographies of people like Dante Gabriel Rossetti in 1928, Edmund Campion in 1935, and Roland Knox in 1959. Ronald, Ronald Knox was his very good friend. All right. Now, he was a traveler. So with traveling, he started writing travelogues. Travelogues basically are novels based on his accounts of meeting people, going to different places. So all these that I will discuss now are travelogues by Evelyn Waugh. He traveled to British East Africa. It was called British East Africa because like India, it was under the control of the British. He went to Belgian Congo. Here he wrote two travelogues. First, Remote People of 1931. Next, Black Mischief of 1932. Black Mischief is a comic novel. More travelogues of evil in war are 92 Days of 1934. A Handful of Dust of 1934. A Handful of Dust is a story of Tony Last, an English country squire who joins an expedition to the Brazilian jungle. It is the maniac story, a story of getting mad. It is that satire with madness, A Handful of Dust of 1934, story of Tony Last by Evelyn Waugh. Next, when he visited Abyssinia, he wrote a travelogue called War in Abyssinia in the year 1936, published in 1936. As I told you, he married twice. So the second wife of Evelyn Waugh was called Laura Herbert, 1937. They married in 1937. Their marriage lasted long and they had many children together. I think six or seven. Evelyn Waugh weds Laura Herbert. All right. Do you like it? If you like it, please comment. These are all the important works, important titles by Evelyn Waugh. More travelogues. Scoop of 1938. This is a satirical novel based on sensational journalism and foreign correspondence. Scoop of 1938 by Waugh. Next, Robbery Under Law of 1939. This is a polemic travel book, argumentative travel book, based on Waugh's experiences in Mexico, where he traveled with his wife, Laura Herbert, which work Robbery Under Law of 1939. Was sixth novel was called Put Out More Flags of 1942. And as I told you, 1945, Brideshead Revisited came, the sacred and profane memories of Captain Charles Ryder. This work, you know, he says, war that my first novel rather than my last. He says this for Brideshead Revisited, very important. Then came Scott King's Modern Europe of 1947, which was a novella or a short novel about frustrations of post-war European travel. Was frustrations of post-war European traveler travel came in Scott King's Modern Europe of 1947. In 1948 came Was the Loved One. The Loved One. It's a satire on the mortician's industry in California, basically on American perspectives on death. And this 
you know, was inspired. He was inspired when he traveled to US. He was a frequent traveler to the United States. So when he traveled there, he saw the mortician's industry, the death industry, and then he wrote The Loved One of 1948. Then came the only historical novel by War called Helena of 1950. This is about the mother of Constantine the Great. It is about the discoverer of the true cross. The historical novel, the sole historical novel by Evelyn Waugh called as Helena of 1950. When the Going Was Good came in 1946. The Holy Places came in 1952. Love Among the Ruins came in 1953. Love Among the Ruins by Evelyn Waugh is a dystopian tale of the modern world. War said he hates modernity. He hates the cars and all the noise that he hears. He said, I don't belong to this generation. Nervous breakdown. You know, there was a time when War actually contemplated suicide. He went to a nearby beach, wrote a suicide note, took out his clothes, went ahead in the water, but then he was bit by a jellyfish. And all of a sudden, he realized that I can't take my life. And he came back. Then he started with his life, but then he was so high on, you can say, alcohol. He had lived such a lavish and a luxurious life while in Oxford, being a part of different groups. Money came on and off, on and off to war. You know, there was a time when he was very good in his career. There was a time he had no money. There were so many children in his house. And he felt demonic possession around him. What is demonic possession? When you feel that somebody is noticing you, somebody is following you, there is a mysterious or a supernatural power which is disturbing you. There are voices. He felt that he is uh, possessed by some evil spirit. All this was discussed in his novel called The Ordeal of Gilbert Pinford of 1957. The Ordeal of Gilbert Pinford. My balmy book, War called it. It's a self-mockery rather than a true autobiography, a work which has been criticized. The Ordeal of Gilbert, Pinford of 1957. Last travel book by Evelyn Waugh was called A Tourist in Africa of 1960. Take last years of Evelyn Waugh in his 60s. You can say 60s is not a very early age to die, but then because Waugh had those experiences of hallucinations, war had those highs and lows of his life. He was in poor health. Critics called him fat, deaf, short of breath in his 60s. His final fiction called Basil Sea Rides Again. Basil Seal Rides Again of 1963. This work saw the revival of the protagonist of Black Mischief and put out more flags. So the protagonist of these two novels were brought in Basil Seal Rides Again. His first part of autobiography was written, named A Little Learning of 1964, in which he described himself as toothless, deaf, melancholic, shaky on my pins, unable to eat, full of dope, quite idle. A Little Learning 1964, autobiography of Evelyn Waugh. How did he die? Evelyn Waugh died of heart failure at his home, aged 62. He had gone to attend a mass in the neighboring village along with his family. It was Easter Day, 10th April 1966, to be very precise, and he passed away. Memorable works, I have told you so many works, but if you're a researcher, these works of Evelyn Waugh have to be very strongly read, understood by you, critically analyzed. Which works? Listen. A Handful of Dust, Black Mischief, Brideshead revisited the sacred and profane memories of Captain Charles Ryder. Next, Decline and Fall. Next, Helena. Next, Scoop. Next, Sword of Honor, War Trilogy. Next, The Loved One. And last, Wild Bodies. With this, we are done with Evelyn Waugh. Our day's lecture on famous authors based on LGBT literature is done. If you liked it, please like our video, share it with your friends and relatives, subscribe to our channel Walad by Dr. Kalyani Walad. This is Hina from Team Walad. Take very good care of yourself. Bye-bye.